Hi everybody, this is Kitsune Haruri and welcome to my channel. As you can see, you can't see my face, so it must be project time. Today I'm going to be doing a very simple project um, for a beginner intermediate sewing level. Uh, this can be done either with a machine or by hand. I'm going to be doing it with the machine myself just because I have one and it's faster and I'm doing a lot of these. What I'm doing today is taking flour sack towels and turning them into reusable washable napkins. Uh, the reason I'm doing this, of course, first of all, they're kind of nicer to have even with them being very plain. It's more practical, it's more green for one, you don't throw these away. Even if they get turned into something really hideous, you can reuse them for something still. But also, during the pandemic, we know how paper goods kept fluttering away and you just couldn't get a hold of anything. Toilet paper mostly, but we were having a problem with paper towels as well. Because people were going, oh, you ain't got toilet paper, there's a second option. <laughs> not good for your plumbing by the way. So what I'm doing today because we needed some more is turning one of these into four complete napkins. What I have here and I, I got it from Rural King not sponsored by the way. I got these a package of two for $1.99 so incredibly cheap. Way cheaper than buying a fabric napkin from the store where you're going to be paying anywhere from five to twenty dollars per napkin depending on you know how bougie the place is but in any case these three here are 100 percent cotton which is excellent you want that more absorbent the softer on your face and bleachable these are 28 by 29 inch towels so they're pretty big all i'm going to do here is pull one out Keep these for your dried goods. You can put them in there. Keep your dried mushrooms dry. Now, first thing you want to know about flour sack towels. Um, reason they're called flour sack is, or sack cloth. Flour sacks used to be made out of this material. And actually, you, people would make clothing out of them. After you emptied out your flour sack, you wash it up, you've got really good cotton material. Very strong, very durable, very soft. And eventually, some of those companies with, that were packaging their flour this way started printing on them so you'd have nice printed fabrics to make your clothing out of. It'd be nice if they went back to that sort of thing, but I don't think anybody's going to be buying great big sacks of flour I will take that back though. My mom's Amish neighbors do. Uh, <laughs> that and people who run bakeries. But anyway, the average person wouldn't so much. So I'm going to set this one aside a moment and show you how big this thing is. It is, you know, if you have a modern tiny table, pretty much a tablecloth. And a matter of fact, um, for other projects you might consider doing, you could decorate up one of these and use it for a table cover. Now they're kind of thin, you can see the color of the table through it, but that's okay. Because you can put backing on them if you want. It's really, really nice to do embroidery on. It's so forgiving. It's so easy. Now when you get these, they are not regular cut. Uh, they're going to be a little bit off. Even on the package, the size was approximate. So don't worry about being perfect on these. It does not matter. You're going to wipe your mouth with it. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to be sitting there measuring to see. They do already have a partial seam. We're going to make use of that. And it's up to you. I cut these off. This little hanger right here allowed you to just hang these up when they're done. You can snip that off. And I will be taking off the tag because, I mean, there's no information on here we need. I mean, we know how to wash cotton fabrics. You know, cold water if you don't want it to shrink, but it's a napkin, so warm is fine. Um, if you put collars in with it, 
it's going to turn collars. So if you want these to be pink, wash them with, with your favorite brand new red sweater. <laughs> Toggle dry low, all that good stuff. You can iron these at low temperature. Most irons have a setting on them that say cotton. Just use that. You're good to go. Steam is best. Makes it easier for you. So let's go in here and just snip this happy little thing right on off of here. Just go right on up to the edge here. Try not to cut the fabric itself. Snip it off. I don't know if you if you do small things, you might have a use for this. Um, I've got so many bits and pieces, I don't need this, but it can go away. Now, next thing I'm going to do to make the size that I want, I only want them to be one quarter of the size of this fabric. So all I'm going to do is right where it already has the wrinkles from the folds. I'm going to fold it right back up. I might straighten it out a little bit. But like I said, they're not cut evenly, so they're not going to be perfect. They're, they're going to taper and everything else. And it's not a huge amount, so it's not really that visible. Ceramic egg. Okay. It's not going to be horribly visible. Just go with it. No problem. Right there. Nice little seam. That's not the one I'm cutting yet. In fact, I'm going to the other seam, which I'm going to have a look at here. Right here, there's a wrinkle that runs right down through here. That's the seam I'm going to cut on. Folded it over just like this. So it's folded in half. It just saves me a lot of fussing to try and get that cut. So here I lay it out. Here's that wrinkle. And here's the scissors. Again, not looking for perfection. Done. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to open these back up. That little fella again, he wants his turn. I'm going to open these back up. As you can see, I've got one raw edge. And the rest of it's still hemmed. I'm going to take the other one. Put those raw edges right back together. Kind of line this up as best as it lines up. And then turn it around. Here's that other fold that we used before. Now we're going to cut it. Same deal. Not worried about perfection. Now, if you're in a real big hurry and are like using these on a camping trip or whatever and don't care, you could leave them like this. They're going to fray a little bit. Maybe if you use pinking shears, you know, the zigzaggy scissors, it might keep it from doing a little. But I'm going to clean these up a little. I want them to be a little bit more sturdy. I'm going to take just one of these four. I'm going to keep... The edges that are already hemmed. The work's done here. No need to do anything else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it to a raw edge right here. I'm going to start over here where the edge of this, this hem is because I want to keep that nice and straight. I'm going to fold it once about half an inch. And then fold it over on itself again so you no longer see that raw edge. It is not perfect. That is not what we're going for. We're just going for clean. And I'm going to start over here with this little hem is. I'm going to pin here first. I am long pinning it instead of side pinning it because of the way I'm going to be zipping down through here with this machine. I'm going to be going fast on this one because it's going to be a very, very basic straight stitch. Nothing fancy. You can, if you want, put a zigzag stitch on this. You can do some little fancy embroidery thing. I got all sorts of goodies down through here. You can do any of it you like. But if you do the fancy one, make sure you go around the other edges so it all matches up. I'm just 
just going to pin this down all the way down until I get down here to this edge. All right, so here I am on the other raw edge. I'm going to do the same thing again, starting with the side that already has the hem. Because it's already got that nice neat thing for me, I want to keep this, when I roll it in there together, I want this to stay neat. So that it all lines up here. On the other end, I'm going to be doing a quick corner snip so it doesn't have a tail sticking out. So. Now, didn't I tell you, this is very basic. <laughs> if you've ever done any kind of a hem at all, or if you've never done a hem, you should be able to do this quite easily. I'm just going to do the same thing, about a half an inch. Fold it over so you have that clean edge. I just finger press it a little bit just because that helps it stay in place. So I'll be adjusting this one as I go, I think. It's a little wonky. All right, so here we are. I've got that nice, clean, squared up edge on this one. Nice and tight. And I'm going to pin her down, same as the other. Pins are still going the same direction. Because nothing's more frustrating for those of you who are new to using sewing machines. To have your pin with the ball head first into that foot. It's really hard to get your fingers in there and get it out. <laughs> so you want to you want to definitely have them facing away. And if you're left-handed as I often am when I'm sewing, because I'm ambidextrous, sometimes it's a pain in the butt to get things pinned the direction you want. here. Alright, so I've gotten down to this end, and as you can see, there's a little taggy tail sticking out here. What I'm going to do, go ahead and fold in, see how much is sticking out, which isn't very much on this one. It's just a little bit of fluff. Now I'm going to open this up, and I can see where my fold is. I'm just going to all the way up to it. Just snip it off at an angle. Just like that. So that when I fold it in, there's no little tail wagging out the side. Nice and clean, just like the other side. And we'll pin that down. I'll do that with all four of the pieces I've cut out. And then we're ready to start the sewing. If you're going to hand sew, just a basic straight line stitch will do the job. And as you can see on here, the stitches go off the ends. Do the same. Just go all the way right along this little edge and right off the end. It'll be nice and secure. Don't forget to knot it. Or if you're using the machine, backstitch it and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and move on to the machine. Okay, so here we go. Machine is set to go. Just a little. Got my pin cushion to take my pins as I go. And my snippers to cut my threads. I have my length set at three. It's whatever you prefer, but three works best for me on this particular machine. My width is between a zero and a one. Again, depends on what you like, what works on your machine. Straight stitch. I'm just going to line this up in here so that my needle will fall just barely inside of that folded edge I put on. I want it to hold as tightly as possible, so I'm going to take it as close to that edge as I can, probably like possibly a sixteenth of an inch in my case. Um, do what's comfortable for you. 
So in my case, that's where I like to go. It's pretty close to what they already have on the finished seams that they had already given us. Go ahead and set that in. Find my foot pedal. Okay. A couple of stitches. Back her up to the higher end. And here we go. Okay, so I'm getting to this end and see it's pushing this up. I'm going to put my needle down inside to stay there. Lift that, tuck that little thing under the foot. Now we're ready to roll. Let me get this pin out of the way. And here we go. Right at the edge. Back stitch. And done. Now we're ready to go down the other side. Exact same thing. Line your needle up about sixteenth of an inch if that's where you're comfortable. Press her in. Back stitch and go. Trim these off nice and neat. Get all three corners. Okay, there we are, all trimmed up. All of our hems are done. And you have a usable napkin. I do recommend washing them before use. You can also take these and decorate them if you see fit. Um, it is cotton. It should take tie-dye very nicely if you want to do that, or any other kind of dyeing. Not particularly tie, but you can do different types of work on it. Um, you could do a wax resist on these really nicely if you want to do that sort of thing. I mean, just something to entertain yourself. You can do embroidery on them. Make sure you're using cotton thread for your embroidery so that if you know it'll stay along with this and not shrink or warp out of shape. Um, I just don't recommend doing anything you wouldn't want to rub up against your face. But that is it. A nice basic reusable all cotton napkin. These cost, let's see, there were two per package of the big towels, and they were $2.25 for a napkin that is going to last you for years and years and years. It's well worth it. It's going to save you a lot of money in paper towels. Save those for cleaning up the cat messes. <laughs> but there you have it. If you like this project, I'm going to be doing some more if, pretty soon. I've still got some other things laying around. I still have that Ravel tail I need to do the project from. I also have some other projects and some products that I want to try out. 
that I had never seen before and they look really really interesting and fun so I'm gonna get on camera and play with them um, the hold up on one of them is I'm trying to do some research on how to finish it uh, I've got the packaging there's no paperwork no instructions except for how to make slime out of it and it's wood clay and water clay uh, the water clay is actually completely clear. The wood clay it looks like wood. Um, I can see some really good uses for those. If I can figure out, do I fire it? Do I stick it in the oven? Is it like a polymer clay? Does it air dry? It says nothing on the package and nothing on the website. <laughs> so once I figure that one out, I may have to cheat and experiment first before I show it to you. Um, I also have some squishies I want to do because there's a lot of folks out there doing squishy makeovers. That sounded like fun to me. I just like the idea of painting on something like that. And that was, I also have another product that I want to try out. Having to do with that, I found a material where you make your own squishies. You literally sculpt them. And I want to try that and show it to you. So anyway, look forward to those, hopefully soon, fingers crossed, um, plus some other things, you'll see. But anyway, I would like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to try these out. Let me know how your results went. And yeah, just message me on Steam Fox Latte on Facebook. Show me what you've done. My timer just restarted. That means it died on me at some point. Yay. We'll figure that out later. Like, share, subscribe, ring that bell, visit my Patreon to join my patrons. I have two so far. Thank you, Sarah and Philip. You guys are great and wonderful, and thank you so much for supporting me. Um, join the Patreon, Steam Fox Latte. You just got to type in the name when you get there see my Etsy page and see what kind of crazy things I sell on the side that is also Steam Fox Latte. Visit me on DeviantArt. That is Kitsune Haruri, the same as here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.